and welcome to our 2018 year in review. How would you describe 2018 if you were a businessman, interesting, surprising, or quite a challenging one? Let's now go on to our lines and connect with Charles IET, who's also been asking people all around town and what do they make of 2018 as we cross over to 2019. While we are at the, let's also hear uh, from some industry, we hear from some industry leaders and others, but let's, let's connect with Charles IT, who's on our ground, a man on our ground. Charles, uh, come in, Charles. Hello, George. So if you hear me quite clearly, we're currently at the uh, Osu Oxford Street where we have been sampling the views of some Ghanaians and even expatriates on what they think has been the challenge for them in the economic year of 2018. It has been a very interesting experience. I didn't find most of them right what well, it's bordering them on their minds on the very feasibility board that we have stationed here uh, just in front. So we're trying to get the uh, link up with our man, Charles IET, on the ground. Who has been engaging um, engaging him about the issues for the outlook for the year as well and 2018? So let, let's let's try and quickly round up on this as well as we move in into uh, 2019. What are some of the things we should be watching, keeping the close I, I eye on? Um, government is going to drive a lot of economic activity. Um, they have signaled that already in the 2019 yes. budget. So we should be looking forward to that. It also means business for the private sector yes. because the government, if one government decides to spend in the right way, yes. it's also good in stimulating yes. economic activity. Yes. Monetary policy has been very supportive, and I expect yes. that that will continue. Uh, and if possible, next year, we should be able to ease the policy rate um, a bit, slightly, um, in 20. Um, uh, 19. So that is also going to be there. We expect that um, um, the banking sector would, would, would pick up a bit in terms of um, lending, deposit activity and all of that. Now that um, we've seen those banks that have scaled the war, that is quite good. There's still a lot that has to be done in the financial sector in terms of microfinance, in terms of savings and loans and all of that. And therefore, government should not um, ignore that sector totally because so far all the intervention have been directed uh, at the banking sector specifically. But the financial market is much broader and all of that. Uh, and then, Tom, uh, have we forgotten about rural banks, microfinance, and then savings? It looks like, you know, all these discussions and all the you things see, that we are doing, we've forgotten ones, uh, about them. But they play the, the, a the critical role in the economy. Mess. In fact, the, the, in terms of the, the rural mess. economy, the, yes. they are very critical. Yeah, in a much bigger mess, even than the universal banking mm. sector, okay? Now, the thing, is, the thing is this. You see, they deal with a lot more people. But why government are addressing the banking sector first is that in terms of actual quantum of money involved mm. is the banking sector. But if you add all the microfinance institutions, savings and loans, and rural community banks, you are talking of less than 15% of total financial intermediation in Ghana. Mm. But they do it more people, but smaller people. So government has decided to address the 85% before focusing on the 15%. Because mm. in terms of the actual amount of money required to solve the problems. Government has, for example, has started paying off all the microfinance depositors mm. who had money genuinely with duly licensed microfinance institutions, not like those fun clubs in Bronga Hafo, but mm. the ones which were duly licensed by Bank of Ghana, like DK. And co <laughs> government has agreed to pay. They've started paying off all of them, starting with DKM depositors. <laughs> all right. And they're going, I think they want to go systematically across all these things. At the end of the day, uh, even I, though they are just, even though they are, these institutions are dealing with so many people, in terms of actual volume of funds, it's, it's about, yeah. it's less than, it's barely one, it's less than a quarter of what yeah, the bank is. Yeah, what, what I was also suggesting was that by now we should be able to have a comprehensive review report of the of the, the microfinance sector, mm. the savings and loans. So we know the extent of the issues, the problems, and let and then this information should be made. The bank available. Of Ghana has it, but they don't want to make it public because well, people will panic. <laughs> the last one they did when they explained that uh, about seventy percent of the money, you know, they issued the government about a year ago. Bank of Ghana issued, less than a year ago, they issued a report saying that about seventy percent. No, about no, so I forgot the percentage. But a large, some large amount of money is in jeopardy. Mm. Money with uh, microfinance institutions and, and rural and community banks. And they created a run mm. of sorts mm. on, on mm. the deposits. So so I'll, I'll, I'll come back, come back to you. In, in covering the year uh, 2018, it wasn't all about the bad news. It wasn't all about 
uh, those who are going down and all the rest. It's also about those who were racing against the odds to, again, do things that can be described as inspiring. Let's watch this few clip we put together at our decks here about some two women doing things uh, from the Western region. Rita Ahushika Diaba, together with her four children and husband, live in Abuadze in the Western region. As a first-time mother and wife, Akushika moved in with her husband in 2008, leaving behind a good-paying job with a Canadian firm. After several failed efforts to find a job and the growing pressures of motherhood, Akushika resorted to be a housewife. I completed UCC and then got married. And um, I was working actually in a, a Canadian firm as they uh, started as a service personnel, then moved to become the administrator, then the acting country director. But um, you, you are married, your, your husband is in Takradi, and you are in uh, Tema. This, however, did not keep her idle as she tried her hands on many products. I started with a few things before. Like. I started selling diapers. <laughs> I've sold diapers. I've sold pepper in a container. No, the, the, the real the branded pepper. pepper. Yes. After several tries, she eventually found her niche: ice cream and juices. Uh, I was like, I really need something that I'll call my own, something that I'll build up. The ice cream that my other neighbor was taking to sell also came in and I was like, well, um, since somebody has taken it from you, let me do something that they would rather come to me for than me going to take from somewhere to come in. But I need to own it. It's my property, my my everything. It is mine. Yes, the ice produces ice cream and fruit juices made from organic foods and with low sugar content. With some plywood, Akushika has managed to convert her porch into a working area where she produces her ice cream and her kitchen, the factory for her juices. Uh, 14 and a half and a 15. 14 and a half. Uh, Ruth is presently assisting her former master and trainer at a shop as she prepares to move into her own shop soon. With the WASI certificate, her parents were hoping she would further her education to one day become a journalist. After her father was laid off from work some five years ago, she was forced to find a job as one of the eldest of seven children. It is then that she was pushed to explore her childhood dreams of becoming a welder. come forward and ask about it. Why a metal fabricator than to own to me training me? And take the across now, ye did in a home bed in one. Yamia don't offer me. Young, passionate, and focused on her job, Ruth Madufia is ready to go all lengths to become a master in her profession. However, the story has not been so easy for Ruth as her family tried to prevent her from becoming a welder all because of the strenuous nature of the profession, which they believe was meant for men only. Because straight straight materials and I say and that is straight straight na ni pepika aman measurement as a designing to the certain way, a be, be, be beautify your environment. And see, a you may be a, a you may be a manager who, due to that, and now they are obey me. I do what I have to do. I desire a be beautify if you see. Ruth loves her work so much that she had to sneak out of home one day to even go to the shop. So they locked me the other day in their room. I need to pass through the windows when they realize I'm at work. <laughs> uh -huh. Due to the passion I have for the job, I can't leave it.
And of those, those clicks that you saw, one was actually voted as the most innovative uh, firm in the Ghana uh, Club 100. And also the second one also voted in uh, one of the international medias uh, being classified or classified here as uh, BBC actually classified her as one of the most innovative women when it comes to entrepreneurs in uh, Africa. Of course, interesting views that tells you that it's not a lot about the bad news, also some good news going down there in the year 2018. And this infrastructure has got a lot of people talking. T3. The Terminal 3 of the Kutuka International Airport is highly operational. You could see passengers being cleared out in the departure section of the terminal. But we get to speak to the managing director of the Ghana Airports Company Limited to help us understand what this means to him and as well the future that holds for the airline industry here in Ghana. So many thanks for your time here with us, Mr. Atefo. First of all, your initial impressions. I think I can, I can breathe more easily today. <laughs> We've, uh, since the contractor completed the work in June, we've been working and uh, looking forward to today. Okay. We've done everything, simulated all scenarios. We've had two major simulations where we put in about 2,000 passengers on each occasion. We evaluated, debriefed, made the necessary corrections, and uh, finally, Finally, today is here, and uh, everybody is excited about it. We haven't spoken to the passengers yet, but I believe you may have been getting some feedback so far. How has the feedback been like from passengers? Um, it's been fantastic. We get, in the initial trials, we gave them some forms to complete and tell us their feelings. And boy, you couldn't get it better. Everybody who has been through here has been very excited about it. They are cautioned to us and so that we should maintain it and keep it as we've always, as it is, so that they continue to enjoy it. So that is our uh, hope, and we are putting in all the necessary measures to ensure that this airport stays as clean, as neat, and as exciting as it is, as it is today. Some of the shops, we still have some shops, some completed. But it is our hope that by the 2nd of October, when it's officially commissioned, all those shops will be ready. So interesting thoughts there by my colleague Charles IT, who has spoken or spoke to the managing director of the Ghana Airports Company, telling us about this whole infrastructure that is our new airport that has got a lot of people talking. Nigerians come here and it's become a big issue in Nigeria as in what Ghana has been able to do. And, once it was said, if you educate a man, you educate an individual. If you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation. I hope I got that line right. You could see those two women yeah. entrepreneurs and, very, and, very and what inspiring. they are doing. Yeah. Very, very inspiring. Mm. And I think it's also good because especially not to downplay the first one with BBC covering that on the stage, I think it's very good. Mm. And we celebrate our women. They, they've been very hard working and they are still very hard working. I'm sure they are going to help us narrow the, the gender pay gap, the gender job seeking and all of that. Mm. So I think we need to encourage them. At least in the U.S., is it a state that has made a compulsory to have women on, on boards as well? In fact, it's, and, the, it's, and, it's and, one and key requirement. To yeah. It's one, discipline. it's one key requirement today for good corporate governance to have a female representation on the on board. The board. Mm. You can check with the FIFA reforms as well. And There's a general that. secretary that from yeah. UN that is a, a, yeah. it's a fact. I've yeah. forgotten her name, general yeah. secretary as well. Yeah. Toma, what yeah. interesting thing about see the Jesley ice cream. The interesting thing was that, see the award they got at the Ghana Club 100 was actually post, was actually based on public voting. Mm. Right at the launch of the Ghana Club 100, they opened voting at the start of the Ghana Club 100 launch and ended the voting just before the end of the event. Mm. And Jesley beat two other companies mm. to emerge best new company in Ghana, the best new SME in Ghana. I think it was a very yeah. impressive And I think feat. we should be profiling a lot more of this, this, uh, this yes. enterprise to encourage a lot of yes. uh, 
Let's, yeah. let's not only women, but men but, as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe we uh, need to learn from them now. Send your boy. <laughs> and what she does is completely, <laughs> <is> completely <laughs> local value added. She doesn't import any of her ingredients. Mm. They're all, so it's totally local value added. It tells you the best thing about oh, what we want can to, do. We and want that to that, rate that, this, right? No, if there's something yes. higher than this, uh, that's okay, what so I'll do. Oh, <laughs> that's what I think. I think we're all getting gold on that one. Oh, yes. Let's look at also the T3 infrastructure and the plan to also develop entire infrastructure in the country i would uh, give it a, a gold as well and the fact that i still believe that air transport in this country is still underdeveloped and the infrastructure yeah. would help and how we can direct traffic to the commercial viable regions mm. and not just any region as well in putting up uh, airstrips or airport or domestic terminals and all the rest so a gold on both those who thought about it and those who are actually implementing it as well why i'm not putting the gold is as just as you said about the people it was designed and basically implemented by one set of people mm. who are now changed for another set of people really for political i mean just because of you know how things change when there's a new change of government and i have my worries about our changing people strictly because of politics yeah you know somebody i mean somebody has done so well in doing this, thing about this point. Charles Asari, Charles Asari yeah. you know, and he really transformed the way Ghana Airports Company operates, the way he finances itself, the, even down to introducing uh, um, uh, IFR, um, International Financial Standards, for, for, uh, for, for his accounting, in order to be able to be getting international finance on commercial basis. Mm. All right. Mm. Um, the T3 was basically funded. On its own balance sheet, mm. using a consortium of borrowers led African by Ecobank, Bank, uh, ADB, and Ecobank. Mm. On its own balance sheet, the government didn't provide guarantees and stuff like that. You know, so and let's give credit where it's due. Yeah, we should also Charles give Osari. credit to yes, the pre I wouldn't even say him as I mean the previous because top management. They were booted out simply because the party that appointed them lost an election. Let, let's we again we're going to go into 2019 as well. And again, the, where should we keep our eyes on? Which sectors? But for you, t Prof, who was your winner in 2018 in terms of the person who did a lot of things and stood out for you that you thought that you can do more? Who was your winner in 2018? I, I think that it was tough for Bank of Ghana mm. in terms of the interventions in the yeah. sector, but they did quite well. Yeah. So I think that the central bank Yes. Um, the governance, um, they did quite well. Um, public confidence in the central bank had gone down a yeah. bit and all of that. But I think with all that they've done so far, I think they've done quite well. And that has been very supportive to the, uh, the, the economy as well. And then also, I can't leave out um, Ken. Uh, I think that um, the finance minister has done very well. And, 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 and his team, there is still a lot that has to be done. Mm -hmm. If you look at where they pick the economy from, the challenges with the, the constraints on the revenue envelope, and, and, and they are really... And doing, the commitments to consumption yeah. spending, mm -hmm. which has yeah. been foisted on him by, yeah. by the presidency, yeah. which and even of, he does not agree with. And like all of that. I think, I think yeah. SHS. Yeah. Yeah. the finance minister and his team have also done well. Yeah. That your winner, uh, Toma. I would agree. Winner. I think I would agree with Prof mm. on, 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 on uh, my, my, my winner, 2018, I think I'll give it to the, the governors of the Bank of Ghana. Yeah. If yes. everything sometimes is about leadership, then yeah. maybe yeah. they have shown leadership yeah. in certain actions that they took. Yeah. In fact, it's down to uh, leadership. We are told in our well, local language or so uh, that fish uh, uh, rot from the head. Mm. <laughs> so so leadership is I'm, I'm looking at some yeah. actions that are deemed to mm. be tough, mm -hmm. that at the end of the day, time will tell. Well, whether yes. what they took, those actions that they took mm -hmm. was right or was wrong and all those So I would, I would, I would give it to the... Okay, so, so, so let's, let's read the Bank let's, of Ghana let's, now. Yeah, I think <laughs> since we seem to be all, we all seem to be agreeing. Uh, I would right. give them a green. On that I would also one. give them a green. <laughs> You're giving <laughs> them a gold star. <laughs> oh yeah, because... Okay, because, quick, okay well, quickly, let's do the, the losers 2018 then. We'll look at the output. Losers 2018. Yeah. <sighs> Um, Quite a tough one, right? It's, 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 um, very, it's very government, tough. Government, men's gold, finance I think, minister. I think oh. men, men's gold lost. I think I think men's gold lost. Men's yeah. gold disappointed Ghanaians. Men's gold perhaps abused the trust of their customers. 
and all of that. And I think that is not good. Um, and I, I think it's one of the low points for us as a country. It's gone beyond just men's good because the, the news is out there and all of that, the implications and all of that. And I think also, uh, should I say greed? It's one of the losers. I hope they lost. <laughs> can we, can we <laughs> personalize greed? Or I can see greed going all over there. Uh, Thomas. Well, I, I related to what Paul said. The individual called get, greed. The biggest loser is, is the bulk of the, the ownership and management of the local financial intermediation industry, whether it's banks, <laughs> microfinance institutions, <laughs> savings and loans, or rural or community banks. They have lost in the basis that they have been exposed for the bad they have been doing. <laughs> and secondly, a lot of new directives have been put in place, which prevent them from doing a lot of the bad things they have been doing in the past, which they have been using to, to line their pockets. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. So mm. I think they are the biggest losers because mm. from 2019, mm. it will not be the same for them mm. again. I would, I would look at the, the local currency and how it's been handled. And for me, that's my low for 2018. Uh, again, I'll say that despite all the good things at the macro level, mm. the argument would be that why is it not impacting on the local currency? And for me, whoever was supposed to take whatever actions, be it on the uh, monetary side. I think we cannot George, blame it totally George, on the central George has bank. forgotten when the CD would depreciate by 31% in the first no, half of the year. But Blaves <laughs> agreed. Now we have got to. Blaves agreed, but could we have a way, a, a long-term, medium solution? The, the to solution, no, the solution so, to me is simple. The one district contract? No, no, reduce the amount, reduce the proportion of, 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 of your, of your debt, public debt financing from foreigners. But we also want to be very careful because it may crowd out the domestic um, uh, private sector as well in terms of their access to credit. So we decided to open it up to foreign investors so Pen we can... Pension we can they they could, No, we need yeah. the forex. Like foreign. the private pension for market. If you look at the, even the, the, the laws for how you can invest private pension for it's all directed towards government. Yeah. George, I, think, I think government. that if you look at where... And it's long term we started money. from not to talk about regime necessarily. I think that it's too early to think that all the measures government has put in place would would, would have yielded the needed results no. for the CD. Let's, let's, we should let's, be looking let's, at in terms let's, of let's, medium let's, to long let's, term let's in terms look of at, all these things. Let's yeah. look at areas to watch or where to watch in two thousand and nineteen prof. Uh, um, I think that um fine. Um we, we should in terms of the economy, um Maybe one where um, planting for food and jobs, I expect that there will be a lot more from that area um, in terms of agribusiness. Growing well. what we eat, yeah. eating what we grow, domestication, the yes, lift and large. Yes, yes, I think that um, we, we've seen some effect mm. of the policy mm. 2018, and I think the yeah. uh, government has resolved to consolidate that going forward. And then we also begin to talk about the value addition and all of that. Uh, but I, I, I'm also thinking that uh, 2019, we should be seeing a lot more commitment, not only in terms of waste, in terms of our resolve with, in, in dealing with corruption, is, is, is very, very important. Not only at the political level, the, the highest level, maybe at our various workplaces and mm. all of that, we all have a role to play in ensuring that um, 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 we preserve the, the public press. Toma, I, I think that in 2019, we'll start seeing the one district, one factory scheme actually come out into the open in terms of more comp uh, factories actually being opened because mm. there are so many now in the process so mm -hmm. people are looking at it like nothing is happening but there are, so there are several that are nearly there which will be open during 2019 but i think the biggest thing we should watch out for is the changes in tax administration and the results that will come out of that especially yeah. when the tax identification number actually starts being used as a prerequisite for accessing public goods and services, yeah. which will happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah let me add that. You know, mm. 2018 has also been very good for us in terms of digitization of the economy. Mm. That drive okay. has been very good, okay. and I think it has to be sustained okay. going forward. I okay. think it's very, very good. I, I would, I yeah. would watch the banking space. I think that we are not over yet. 
I would also be looking at uh, Ghana City as well and whether <laughs> all these measures that are taken are, are being implemented would indeed end up uh, ensuring that we have a medium-term strategy in firmly stabilizing the city. And earlier on, the clips that we played has to do with the inspiring stories of 2018. Uh, Madam Rita Aku Shika uh, Diaba, CEO of Yesly Eyes, voted as the company of the future doing the 17th edition of the Ghana Club 100. And the vote was done live. Uh, Ruth, uh, uh, is it... Dufia was named as BBC list of 100 inspiring and influential women from around the world in 2018. And catch full stories on Joy News at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Again, kudos to these uh, women who are actually giving real meaning when you talk about the fact that what men are doing, the women can even do uh, better on that one. And